start on the flat, the fundamentals, uh, you know, we don't know everybody's level, so it's about building confidence, pushing everyone's level, but the fundamentals, I think, apply to everybody, and we kind of learn, once we've learned them, it makes everything else a lot easier as well, so it takes a bit of time, but it's worth just learning, the, getting the structure of the basic riding, but uh, you know, we're flexible as well, we do a few exercises, if it's getting a bit intense, we can ride out a little bit, mix it up. And uh, yeah, we'll be here to help you as much as we can. So, you know, flexible and have fun's the main thing, ride safely. And if any questions, just you know, just ask away and we do our best. Awesome. Right on. Yeah. Thanks to this guy for the oh. leg in. Thanks, yeah. Arnold. The yeah. movements on the bike, getting the controls are kind of consistent with all the advanced techniques. So, once we've got these. Move, movements and fundamentals, like I say, makes it everything else a lot easier and quite often the more advanced stuff is just putting together the basic movements and controls. So the first exercise is to get all the controls at the same time. So it sounds obvious using the brakes and the clutch and the gas together, but the key is to just get that feeling, dragging the brakes and holding it on that fighting point of the clutch gas set as well so not when I demonstrate you won't see anything moving so it's holding that sweet point where you've got all the controls and you're moving along so that's the point that obviously you've got good control good feeling of everything to, to ride safely you know, the goal is to ride safely and have confidence with that obstacles without cracking too severely so that biting point on the clutch that's Key, a big mistakes to be clutching it in and out too much, but riding slow, obviously, we're holding it on that biting point, really small movements, and the gas will just be set. And you're up a little bit, keep the revs up, especially the four stroke, keep the revs up a little bit, and then just feeling on the brakes. So, we're going to break it down, we're focus on the controls, and then the next step will be turning and body movement. Back and 
think about turning shoulders and hips and the handlebars leaving that nice stable position. So that turning the body in just makes like go the way you want it to go. Just straight like this, you always want to got to be more get better feeling as well if it's too heavy on the front obviously it's going to dip in so still come in the that's a good basic making minute adjustments with all the controls but you can't see anything moving that's the key that holding it on that point now you just start to just really work all the controls to keep that precision so that's obviously really important in the slow riding any questions ride the brakes on that one from yeah front, yeah front so, and back or just yeah front and rear brakes so like i say you don't need to use the brakes but in this situation, but when we get into technical certain areas, you need to be able to do uh, all the control, whatever the brake, just the extra control. I'd enjoy you don't have to be so precise sometimes but you need that, that a certain amount of control and efficiency to, to ride good. So the next step is to start to think about the line of the wheels. So when I'm turning through the technical sections and I'm thinking about a line for the front and a line for the rear, primarily the rear tyre to be on a good line and then manoeuvring the front accordingly. So this next exercise kind of forcing you to use the technique, the turning technique better. So when you're out on the open, you're thinking about the, the position. It doesn't matter too much. You, you can go left, go right. You've got, but now you've got to stick to a line. And the more technical the riding, the more important, important that technique becomes. So you can ride in and out of the rocks is the first one. But uh, more of a challenge, I prefer to take, to take front wheel around the rock back wheel opposite side so you've got to keep a precise line which obviously <laughs> obviously relates to riding through keeping the bike in a line in a gully or whatever so the key is to obviously lean the bike in turn tight front wheel close to the rock so the rear clears and then the next step is to obviously transition quickly so you're ready for the next rock you go out too wide you're not going to get back so like again you're going to get offline if you don't get the transition but it all comes back to the key points that we've just done if you do the brakes body position lean the bike you will be able to do this 10 times out of 10.
Get a clear run, you've got to do the <laughs> celebration. <laughs> you need to know if you've got a clear run. You've got to do the wheelie too, right? Any celebration, hopefully it makes sense, but keep, keep reminding yourself of the key points and then the cliff. You'll be doing this stuff easy. Uh, Graham, you're, you're, uh, you're doing throttle and you're braking front, front and rear through that whole thing? Yeah, that's okay. it. So okay. just a little bit of everything, that's the key, and it's never anything too aggressive to on or off it's just holding it everything on that little bit of pressure clutch brakes yeah. throttle it's holding that point that point that sweet point is critical for full control of the bike but, you know you will you'll get a clear run without the brakes maybe but you know we need to be getting to, into good habits I got, I think going the wrong way. Front tire in front, right? Yeah, front tire around. Okay. Doesn't matter, the main thing is that turning technique. Okay, okay. control lift to take the weight off the front is important and doing it with the body and suspension and not relying on the gas you're just relying on gas you're going fast and stuff you're not getting a control lift so as much body as we can so the first exercise to do it with the engine off get that body movement suspension so the first one is get brakes just solid locked lean back arms straight nice and tall on the bike so get up nice and high any if you start down here hard to push down on suspension because first to go up first we want to push down as much as possible to get the rebound so nice and tall on the bike and then flex down arms and legs knees towards the radiator you've got to take pressure of the knees so a lot of that, that force on the front is actually with the legs as well pressure down about six inch from the radiator six inch from the seat pulling back up. So you can see suspension already working, I'm on the stand restricting it, but <laughs> pushing down, pulling up. So that one movement is obviously important for the ride. And then next step, take it off the stand, get that movement, stand, now you've got to jump up and then pressure down, bounce it. I'll come round and hold the bike if you're struggling, but difficult exercise, but we want to get in the mindset using just suspension. Find the rhythm, the rebound, feel the rebound. You can start to control it a little bit. And you've got to feel that when it's bottoming out and transitioning with the rebound and then you work really efficiently. Uh, when you did that just now, you just have only the front brake going? 
Front and rear brake. Front rear, okay. Co common mistakes. Again. Keep that rear brake force down. If it's too low, you're going to struggle. Gets your lungs working as well after. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, lean back a little bit, flex down as you go. Good, perfect. Yeah, a little bit more with the, the, the legs, more with more the legs leg. the better. So not really pivoting forwards with head and shoulders, okay. more of the arms and legs. Is it a jerk with the arms? Yeah, okay. push down and then okay. a long pull up. A jerk and pull. Yeah, that's it, that one good one. That was better? And then you just become a little bit more efficient. Yep, thank you. Really? Yeah. Nice. You've got a weekly record. <laughs> good. Yeah. Let the suspension do the work a little bit. So okay. It's good, it's there. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, we've got the force of the brakes. Obviously, we're going to come along first gear, you pull the brakes. Front end compressed force of the brakes compressing the suspension, so we just need to combine that with flexing down with the legs, and we've got a really good, efficient pressuring down in the first part of the reel. So, a rear brake as well, it works when you just use the rear brake, it'll compress a little bit, obviously, front more. When we go onto the wheelies, we don't have to use both brakes sometimes, quite a lot just with the rear, but certain situations we're pressuring down with both brakes, so it's good. To practice that first, just pressing down before we go for the. It's already starting to come up. I've got the gas just set up a little bit, and I'm slipping the clutch when it's compared to slipping the clutch to feed it. Forward. So right there, you're using more back brake than front brake. On this one, just using both. Okay. But, you know, when we go to do the wheel, there's a thousand variations of wheelie, so we're always mixing a little bit of rear, a lot of rear, more front. For example, coming downhill. You need obviously need both brakes going slow. Sometimes we use both, but going fast uphill, we're not going to bother, you know, dabbing the brakes. Uh, okay. We still got the fundamental flexing down, and then we just vary the brakes depending on the situation. But you know, get that fundamental of using both brakes, and then we're ready to adapt. <laughs> so the clutch is important. You obviously flexing down, pressing down, and then you've already got tension on the clutch. You can hear that engine that tension slip in the clutch to move forwards so I get a good rhythm let the bike do the work now you don't need to be so much into the front with the knees you can flip be in the seat a little bit because the pressure of the brakes is pressure in the front more so we just coordinate legs with brakes clutch in start to have tension on the clutch ready better to have that tension on the clutch ready when it's compressed well, let's go for it
level you're at with wheelies, you know, to try and progress. But always in a controlled way, there's no point getting past. You're a bit frustrated, but just a controlled lift up, stop for a fraction of a second, and then obviously just clutching a little bit more and powering a little bit more, transition the weight to the rear and extend the legs as you're pulling up. Extend the legs as it comes down, you can flex down and it's all keep pressure down, and then legs back. And then the front wheels up higher obviously. You can stay leaning back, keeping not to panic, obviously a bit of confidence. Up uphill. Uphill is easier to feel confidence because you can easier to hold it. So front wheel up and then you find the balancing point and then the front that point I'm almost dragging the clutch and rear brake so it's already there ready as soon as you're off, off the clutch and the brake so it's going to happen too quickly if you go back so you've got to be there tension on the brake and the clutch ready. So do you just stay consistent on the throttle and pretty much just regulate the yeah, clutch and brake? Yeah not too much I'm giving it a little bit of it. Once it's there you can start to play a little bit with the gas but generally it's small movements and a little bit of gas already again the gas is there kind of ready. So I did, how much how much uh, are you initially using the rear brake? Not at all. Say it again. How much are you initially using the rear brake? Yeah. So uh, on the lift, uh, front brake. Like I say, we you, we can use. We're doing the fundamental. We want to use both brakes, but obviously front brake's a little bit tricky. So you get you know, a little bit awkward sometimes to pull up. But the little hops are easier with the front, and then when it gets a little bit bigger, you've either got to take your hand off the front brake or just use rear brake on the big steps and quite often just the rear brake is a lot easier because you've got the full hand on the ah. gas so you can mix it up a little bit like I say this is a fundamental so it doesn't matter whether it's road brake rear brake but you need to be able to use some kind of braking to compress it and slow it down otherwise you're just going to be hitting stuff you can do wheelie without the brake but you're just going to go faster Sometimes we, we don't use the brake because if it's slippery, it's more chance of it spinning up if you stop. So we have to hit kind of a little roll it into it. And then, like I say, uphill, no need to. You can get lifts up easier. So, yeah, pressure down, pressure down. Get the lift up and down. I'll mix it up the brakes if you like. I'll do just the rear. So impressive. <laughs> he just rides off like that and goes home. <laughs>
or anything you've got to obviously lift the front a little bit it's when you've got a little step is the worst thing and you don't lift it's gonna it comes off the step and then pressures in obviously too steep so and then you start to accelerate a little bit to help bring the front wheel out but you know it's still on the fairly safe side of safe <laughs> <laughs>
wheel against as well, or you know, tension on the clutch. Often I've got one foot on the footrest, so I've got control and pressure to on suspension the tyre. But uh, you know, you can drop into the gully as well and, and lift it up. But you know, somewhere out on a, sl a nice slope, you can practice holding it as well. So any questions? you want to pull the bike round you get to the side you want and so you can pull it round and lean it so if you lean in obviously it goes but it's bike straight and body straight to be able to hold it straight. Are you always trying to keep your foot on the brake or do you sometimes just pivot it? If you can get the foot on the brake more control. But obviously the other thing is scoot back and get both feet on the ground. Yeah so in reality you know we're Different situations, we're, we're all over the bike, one foot on, both feet off, we're just doing whatever fits, but you know, again, we're doing a fundamental and then you adapt it to the situation. And another variation is on the switchback, we're, we're kind of floating the front wheel around, but you know, we've got to be, we're going to be moving, we're going to be slipping the clutch a little bit. So a typical switchback, you see it a lot, or you're going up a hill, you haven't made it, and then you look for a way out. So, going to happen a lot. Romaniacs, you'd, we do this for six hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of switchback. On the line, obviously you're coming into the... So this position is kind of typical, so I'm leaning back and I've got pressure on the foot. If you can see, can you see the rear sinking down as I lean back? I've got tension on the bars, so that's what's 
pulling the front up a little bit and pressure in the back. If I take weight off, obviously you can see it, it moving a little bit. So as soon as I take, put my weight on that foot, and just hold it there, lean back. And then slip the clutch, you can get a shitload of grip. And then you come to the grip back. But you can obviously um, go for do it in smaller hops if you wanted, but you want to be as efficient as possible sometimes in smaller hops again. The worst thing to do is to turn too early. So you, you turn in the back wheels off this ledge. So I see it that a lot. So just make sure you're well past ride further up. You can just ride straight if you want up there. <coughs> So make sure your back wheel is always high coming onto it. As soon as you, you drop down low, you, you're back down again. So always go higher than you, you know, up to where the back wheel is as much as it can. An efficient one is to obviously pivot round a little bit. But always aim to land front wheel up higher. If, if I start and come down right round onto that ledge and then drop down with the front, it can get me in trouble as well. to dig in but I kept going straight <coughs> obviously turn I went straight and then turn back again so now I'm in a fairly good position I don't want to bring the front down much more because now I can go across keeping the front wheel high so it's always pushing up the banking so it just reduces the chance of slipping down there's not much of a rut now you might get a better rut but that's it's so loose unpredictable you never know how much grip there is so to be safe keep the front high and again that position no chance of that rear wheel slipping down you just catch out you don't know how loose it is you just want it pushing all the time then you can do it a bit quicker quickly transition to the other foot spin it round lean into the same again here. Obviously I'm putting a live fresh line now. So it's dug in a little bit. This technique now it's stuck on the dug a bit of a hole but again I want to go straight and then go back as well. Thank you. 